the recent death of popular Ethiopian musician Hakalu Hundesa has heightened ethnic tensions in the nation. It sparked violent demonstrations around Addis Ababa, which quickly spread to the Oromia region, where Hundesa was born. At least 160 people died. Africa 54's managing editor Benson Makori spoke with Bileni Seyum, the spokesperson for Ethiopian Prime Minister Abe Ahmed. In part two of his conversation with Seyum, she responds to accusations that the government is still using old repressive tactics, including the arrests and disappearance of government critics. So Vincent, at my level, I can't, um, I can't give you the detailed accounts of each individual. There are suspects that have been apprehended in connection to uh, threats against the constitutional order and internal state security. But these um, details are being communicated frequently by the attorney general's office as well as the federal police as well. So those details are something that um, are being handled by them and are being communicated uh, quite openly and frankly. Uh, and, and for those who, you know, parents and relatives who say their children have been missing, young students who are abducted, believed to have been abducted by government forces, uh, what is your answer to them? Um, I don't think there is any connection to government forces, and I don't think there is any reports connecting them to abduction by government forces. Um, the government has, uh, I mean, through uh, the parliamentary address that the Prime Minister has made recently, as well as on previous occasions, has given adequate response to that. So this is still an ongoing investigation. The government has committed itself to ensuring that if there is, these cases are actually um, in reality, that the government is taking all the necessary measures and information gathering to ensure that um, uh, they are reunited with their families. Now, the Oromia region protests have been going on for a long time. Uh, they've been sustained. Uh, many would want to know what are their demands and what is the government doing to resolve or to meet some of those demands so that at, at least things can start changing. So the demands by um, political parties and it's not only uh, political parties of one group because um, again this is part of uh, the background and understanding the context and really referring uh, back to the context instead of just looking at it in a very narrowed um, event based and incident based uh, scenarios but as i had mentioned to you earlier the government um, part of the the, the reforms critical part of the foundation of the reforms has been to um, open up the political space, to engage or to invite all of these political parties to come and engage in a peaceful struggle. Um, and it's not only inviting them to come and engage, but the prime minister as well as his administration have created various platforms um, over the span of 2.5 years to have a round table discussion. So there's been many forums. Um, a lot of the political parties have been invited to these forums to provide their ideas, to provide their policy options, to provide their arguments on what is being laid out. Um, very recently as well, uh, when the health state of emergency um, was also enacted, this is something that the government also invited and engaged um, political parties. But one thing that I want to underscore is what the government is doing to address all of these grievances that have accumulated over Ethiopia's long political history, um, that have been suppressed over the past 20 something years. The expectation of everything being um, uh, addressed within a short 2.5 years, where there is a lack of institutions, inherited lack of institutions, that the government is still laying the foundation for establishing and strengthening institutions, is, um, is unrealistic. But, they're part of the process and they're engaged in the process and there is that open will to engage in a constructive manner with policy options because what the Ethiopian people need right now is not a political struggle but what they're looking for is the path, a clear path to their prosperity and their development and all actors are being asked to construct to constructively engage in this path. Now, as a journalist, I, I have to ask this. Uh, we have also been uh, reporting about uh, uh, Yeswe Shimelis, who's a journalist, and also there's uh, uh, this other missing journalist is actually a Kenyan, uh, Yasin Juma. Would you tell us something about them? As I was mentioning to you earlier as well, Vincent, um, I don't have a list of um, these individuals, but like I said, this is something as part of ongoing investigations because this incident just happened very recently. Um, there are people that have been apprehended in connection to that. There's still a lot of investigations that are going and more people that are being apprehended in connection with three elements. The three elements of um, apprehend apprehending suspects is happening at the level of 
those who carried a jalu, and the second one, those who were um, linked to the unlawful hijacking of his body and creating disruption and chaos around that, as well as media incitement of hate speech. And then the third aspect is those that have also been involved in um, the destruction of lives and property throughout the protests that were calling the protests and the riots. So the federal police and the attorney general are the ones that are mandated to investigate and put forth um, uh, some of the details that you're asking in this front. That was Africa 54 Managing Editor Vincent Makori speaking with Bileni Sayum, spokesperson for Ethiopian Prime Minister Abe Ahmed.